is for a maze. Say you want your machine to turn off a light. The machine is not practically intended to accomplish that goal. That's what your finger is for. In other words, the machine is just for show. It is not intended to be a solution to the problem. Because of this, a Rube Goldberg machine should amaze those who watch it, so don't make it boring. These are the most amazing parts of my machines. The best way to amaze people is with risky or unexpected elements. <laughs> Here is the most amazing element I have ever seen in a homemade Rube Goldberg machine, and I will never forget it. B is for balls. The most essential materials for a Rube Goldberg machine are balls. Especially ping pong balls, golf balls, marbles, and bouncy balls. You basically can't make a Rube Goldberg machine without balls. C is for camera. When you are ready to record your entire machine, Get out your camera. Most likely the machine won't work on the first try, but you never know. Also, it's fun to keep the fail videos. These can sometimes be useful in figuring out why the machine failed. In this example, I couldn't figure out what went wrong until I went back and watched the fail. D is for dominoes, duct tape, and design. A design is important when making a Rube Goldberg machine not only for each individual element, but for the machine as a whole. This does not even have to be a drawing, just a vague image in your head. E is for electricity and empty space. It is important to use all the space that you have. You can see how all the space here is used. If you don't, it makes your machine look incomplete and unprofessional. Here you can see all the space that I wasted. F is for foreign objects and fails. Fails are a huge part of making Rube Goldberg machines. The first time you set off your machine, it probably will not work. In fact, it is unlikely that it will work within the first 10 tries. Do not get frustrated. Failing is all part of the process. Just reset, test and modify if necessary, and set it off again. But we'll get to those things later. G is for golf balls and goal. Every machine needs a goal. This not only makes the machine seem as if it has a purpose, but it also signals to the viewer when the machine is done. H is for high. It is important that you build your machine on a high table. As you can see, without a high table, the domino and string technique will not work, and your machine will quickly run out of both kinetic and potential energy. I is for improve. Was your first machine not as good as you were hoping it would be? Don't worry. The more machines you make, the better you will get. These are some of the first machines I made. Like with anything, you will improve with more practice. J is for Jenga blocks and jealous. When you are watching other people's machines on YouTube, like The Sprice Effect, Doodle Chaos, Toothpaste 35, or Burlog Awesome, you may become jealous of how much better you think their machines are. This is actually something I struggle with. But keep in mind that you have different materials, a different building environment, and a different style of building. So your machines may not be worse just because they are different. Those same people may watch your machines and be jealous of something they think you do better than they do. Basically, don't be jealous of other people's machines. Wow, this Jack of All Spades 98 guy is really good at managing space and camera work. K is for connects and kill. If an idea just isn't working, even through many redesigns and tests, don't be afraid to kill the idea. Here, I'm trying to test an idea that will work, but I end up killing most of the ideas. It may feel bad to sacrifice an idea, but it won't feel as bad as struggling to get an impossible idea to work. L is for lift, lever, and learn. After every fail, try to fix what went wrong. That applies to what I'm doing here, too. Every time something failed, I tried to find a solution. Learn from the mistakes. Sometimes it might take a little tweak, other times a complete redesign of an element. M is for materials, marbles, marble track, and modify. 
This goes along with the last one as well. Whenever something fails, modify the design. N is for new. For me, the hardest part of Rube Goldberg machines is starting a new one. This is for two reasons. First of all, this often means that I have to destroy the previous machine, which is hard because I worked so hard on it. Secondly, a blank table can be intimidating. The best way to start a machine is with a goal or a big element of the machine. O is for organized. In order to increase efficiency in building your Rube Goldberg machine, organize your materials. This means that everything is where it is supposed to be when you need it. The way you organize is up to you. P is for playing cards, ping pong balls, pulley, and patience. A major part of making Rube Goldberg machines is patience. When your machine fails, try not to get too frustrated. Sure, frustration is part of the process, but just be patient. The machine will eventually work. However, if your patience is short, or if you've just had enough, Q is for quit. Don't be afraid to take a break once in a while. No one will blame you for doing that. R is for reset. This one is pretty self-explanatory. I've also talked about it before. S is for string, screen link, and success rate. The success rate of your machine should be fairly good. My advice is that each element should work 9 times out of 10. Some people say that 9 out of 10 is not good enough, because that failure ratio gets magnified the more elements you add. You can see the math behind that here. But, I say that is precisely the point. You don't want your machine to look too easy. T is for track, trains, tape, and test. I have also talked about this a fair amount, but like I said, make sure each element works 9 times out of 10. U is for unique. YouTube is a great resource for Rube Goldberg ideas, but don't copy other people's ideas. Try to modify them and make them unique. This footage is from some of the videos on YouTube devoted to Rube Goldberg machine ideas. People who make Rube Goldbergs on YouTube are a community, so when you copy another person's ideas, you aren't contributing anything. V is for VHS tapes. Not everybody has these, but I included them because I didn't have anything else for V. Also, their varying weights but identical sizes is extremely useful. W is for waste. You only have a certain amount of materials, so try to manage the use of them. Never use something that you only have four of if something that you have ten of would work just as well. X is for xenophobia. Xenophobia is the fear of strangers, but less specifically, it is the fear of unknown things. When making Rube Goldberg machines, don't have xenophobia. Never be afraid to experiment and try new ideas. That is how many of my best ideas, shown here, came into being. Y is for YouTube. As I mentioned before, YouTube is a great resource for watching Rube Goldberg machines and getting ideas for them. If you need ideas, just watch a few videos, and hopefully they will inspire you. Also, upload your videos to YouTube. The Rube Goldberg YouTube community is fairly small, and we could always use more members. As I mentioned before, these are the most popular Rube Goldberg creators on YouTube. Z is for zipline and zigzag technique. The zigzag technique is very popular, and it is great when you want to cover a lot of space. However, use it sparingly. It is boring to watch a ball zigzagging on a board for a long time. 